I'm Jo Whipple, travel enthusiast, wine and culinary explorer, and adventure seeker. Join me on this beautiful trek along the California Highway 1 Discovery Route as we journey down California's breathtaking Central Coast. It's 101 miles of fun where 10 destinations make for one fantastic vacation. So sit back and enjoy the ride. here in Arroyo Grande with Laurel Sherry, and Laurel is the official artist of the California Highway 1 Discovery Roadmap. Laurel, thank you for inviting us to your studio. You're welcome. I'm glad to have you. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I've been painting a long time, most of my life. Uh, I love nature. I love landscapes. I've been painting the Central Coast for about 18 years, and I have painted so many areas in this county and so many along the Highway 1 route. Yes. I love that route. You've captured it just magnificently. As we look around, we can really feel the sense of the Central Coast looking at your work. Oh, that's great, because I go out and paint on location, and I experience these incredible moments with nature where I'm really involved with the landscape and I like to get that involvement and emotion on the canvas to share with people. Yes, and you've had some very unique experiences on that route, haven't you? Yes, I was invited to paint at Hearst Castle. I've been painting there four different days over a couple of years. It was so special. It's like the most aesthetic place I have ever painted. And this one is, where is that? The, the olive trees? That's yeah. it. That's the driveway to the lavender farm. Oh, I've never been there. Yeah, it's neat. And you also are a teacher, right? I do teach. I have private classes in my studio. It's a little small, so I can fit two to three students max. Right. And I like to concentrate on the basics of painting and help people get a really good start. You already know where your dark spots are and your light spots. Is that marked or that's in your, right up here? Well, I've kind of got the dark spots mm -hmm. marked out already. Because with oils, you do the darks first. Okay. With watercolor, you do the lights first. It's so totally that. opposite. It sounds, you know, kind of odd that somebody would say, oh, I was out painting all morning, I'm exhausted. Huh. You know, three hours of painting. But it's so intense. You're seeing every little thing and you're experiencing this whole location and working really hard to get it on the canvas fast. Right. Because you have to paint fast when you're on location. Do you have a specific time of day that you prefer painting? Oh, absolutely. Painter's hours. Sunrise, sunset. When the light is slanting and you get the long shadows, right. that's when it's most interesting. If you would like to learn more about the California Highway, one discovery and the art and the nature that we all experience here. You can see Laurel Sherry at her website and contact her and see all of her paintings there as well. They are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Laurel, for having us. You're welcome. Right here on Highway 1 Discovery Route, about five miles off the road in Arroyo Grande, California, is this historic footbridge. Check this out. It's really fun. This historic footbridge built in 1875 spans 171 feet in length and is suspended 40 feet above Arroyo Grande Creek. It's the only bridge of its kind in all of California. Newton Short originally built this bridge because he had a problem. You see, the creek was running through his property. So he built the bridge with no side rails. 
scary. In 1911, the people of this town decided, you know, we really like this bridge. We're gonna put side rails on it. And the rest is history. More than 100 years later, the bridge still stands connecting the downtown area to another downtown area. And the people, they love it. Come visit Arroyo Grande Swinging Bridge. It's a real blast from the past. Wow, here we are at Tally Vineyards and Tally Farms. We have the pleasure of being with Brian Tally. Thank you for having us. This is magnificent. Well, I'm glad to have you here. Yes, and this property is just, it is so picturesque. It's a painting everywhere I look. Well, as far as I'm concerned, this is uh, one of the most special places in the world. Uh, I was born and raised here in Arroyo Grande. Uh, it's a beautiful, moderate climate, ideally suited for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, and that's what we specialize in. You do, and you just won an award, 98 points for your Pinot. That's right, uh, Robert Parker's Wine Advocate, and that was really, that's the, the highest score we've ever received in, in, in our history, and it was a wonderful accolade for for our team here at Tally Vineyards. Right, and when you talk about your team, you're really like a family here. You've been together for a lot of years and you're winemakers. Well, over the years, uh, uh, we've had three different winemakers. Eric Johnson is, is the guy that's responsible for the, the yeah. most uh, recent uh, accolade. Um, but, you know, we've made great wines uh, throughout our history, and I think that's really a tribute to the very special place that we have here in coastal San Luis Obispo County. What is it that makes makes this area so special? Well, I think it's a proximity to the ocean. We're just about five miles from, from uh, the ocean where we're standing here right now. Um, that really moderates our climate. I think we also have a real diversity of soil types, and so um, that just leads to wonderful complexity in our wines and really uh, refreshing acidity, which gives the wine some nice energy. There is, and, and Tally wine is very unique. It, whenever I have the pleasure of drinking it, it's like, oh yeah, that's... That is tally. That is the soil. It has a very, very unique flavor to it. So thank you for having us. Can we go and taste some wine? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we gotta do that. Let's go. Come on. Okay. Okay, so we've spoken a lot about the tally vineyards, but there's also Tally Farm, which is a big part of this organization. Well, it's it's actually the bigger part of our <laughs> organization, and that's a business that my grandfather started back in 1948. Wow. How many crops are you growing here? We grow about 25 different kinds of fruits and vegetables, and uh, some of the things that are most exciting to me, we, we grow what I consider to be some of the best avocados in the world. Oh. In fact, I just picked one today. It's going to take a couple of weeks to get right. Oh, right, and there's a farm box that's available if you're lucky enough to live here, yeah? There is, uh, Tally Farms Fresh Harvest, and uh, we're, we're delivering that at uh, about 40 locations around San Luis Obispo County, and people can go to freshharvest.com and, and see exactly where they can pick up a harvest box. Yeah, and in this community, there's a lot of organizations, philanthropic things that you're doing. Well, the Fund for Vineyard and Farm Workers is an endowment that my wife, Janine, and I established back in 2004. It involves wineries around the county who donate grapes or wine to make a wine called Mono Tinta. That's kind of the main charity aspect of, of how we raise uh, money for the Fund for Vineyard. Oh, wow. Work. So you can buy this wine as you can. Oh, that's yes. that's a way that everybody can, can join us in supporting the Fund for Vineyard. Where farmers. do we get this wine? Uh, right here in the tasting room. Nice. And is it in, only available in the tasting room, or can we get it online? Can we? Uh, you can buy it online, but uh, yeah, you have to buy it directly from, from Tally Vineyards, and okay. all of the proceeds benefit the Fund for Vineyard and Farm Workers, which in turn benefits um, farm workers throughout San Luis Obispo County. That's an amazing endowment, and you've raised quite a bit of money there. Uh, about $600,000 uh, since we established it. Yeah, that's really, really remarkable. And I do want to mention, too, you are part of SIP. Uh, your wine is SIP certified. That's right. Tell us a little bit about that. Special. Well, SIP stands for uh, Sustainability and Practice, and it's really it's a certification program where um, all of our practices, all of our vineyard practices, are, are audited. Um, we've been farming sustainably for over 20 years now, but it, it's really nice to have that third party. Uh, certification that recognizes those efforts. Absolutely. So, Brian Talley, I'm telling you, we're talking about sustainability, doing good in the community, philanthropic efforts, and delicious. Thank you Cheers. so much. Cheers. Time for some real adventure. We're heading to Oceano for the ride of a lifetime. Buckle up. 
This is such a cool day. We're here in Oceano at Banner Airways with owner and pilot J.R. Smith, and we're going on a biplane ride. Okay, so tell me, I'm gonna hop in the back, and we're gonna well, take off. No, actually, you're gonna be in the front, right where the action's at. Okay, so all right, I like action. You're all gonna right. love it. Okay, well, let's go, let's okay, go. Wait, wait, Joe. Yes? Well, we have to do a briefing in uh -huh. the hangar first, a okay. safety briefing. A sa yeah, you gotta have that. Come on, we'll Safe. get you geared up. Safety. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Joe, are you right or left handed? Left. A lefty. Okay. You know how to swim or dog paddle, where they come to that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. In the event of an in flight emergency, the first thing we're gonna try to do is land on the beach or the land somewhere, okay? Okay. As soon as we roll up to a full stop, all you have to do is reach down, unfasten your safety belt, exit the aircraft, and then move away from it, okay? Okay. All right, it's a real basic deal. Do you have any questions up to this point? I didn't really sign up for this. Yeah, you signed up for it. we got a show to put on. Are you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's get the headsets on you and go have fun. Okay. Okay, when you climb in, stay on the black wing walk. You can grab right there. Grab the handle up above. Step right directly onto the seat. Okay. There you go. Okay, this is your safety belt. It's real simple. Okay. okay. It locks just like that. In the event of the in-flight emergency, full stop landing, land or water, reach down, unfasten it just like that. I want okay. you to try it once. You got it. That's all you got to do. Okay. We'll right. get you plugged in here. Right. You can hang on right there and there's good. Are you ready? Yep. Let's go. Clear the prop. This Oceano Depot created the building blocks for what is now the city of Oceano. Come on in, let's check it out. We're here with Linda Austin. She's the president of the Oceano Depot Association. Linda, this building is just teeming with history. Tell us about it. Well, it all started with the coming of the railroad in the uh, late 1890s that put Oceano on the map. This depot served from 1904 to 1973. It was probably the most important building in the South County. It served all the freight, passenger, and uh, telegraph service until it was closed in, in the 70s due to the advent of the trucking industry and the automobiles. We were fortunate enough to have this depot preserved and move to this location for a museum and community center. That's right, because the city does not support this, correct? No, this is an all-volunteer, nonprofit organization that runs and manages the Oceano Depot. It's really special. There's nothing like There's this. There's nothing like it. The other stations you'll see that have been preserved around California, most of them have been converted into um, offices or other ventures where they just look like a depot on the outside. And this is one of the last really original standing depots. We're now in the waiting room of the Oceano Depot and we are greeted by Leroy, our conductor. We're now in the ticket office of the Oceano Depot and what you see on the walls are photographs of the World War II servicemen from the Oceano and the surrounding area. These photos hung on the wall in Hap Corey's Barbershop, downtown Oceano. When Hap retired, he donated these photos to the Oceano community and they now hang proudly in the depot. Here we are in our 1900s era caboose and you'll see the model train courtesy of the San Luis Obispo Model Railroad Association. 
The last weekend in January, the whole depot is full of all kinds of model trains during our model railroad days. We love to have people come learn the history, donate, and really get to see what a real old time station is like. That's right, so come and enjoy the history in this one of a kind station. Donate, enjoy it. Thank you so thank much you so for much having for us, coming. Linda. Yes, thank you. Oceano is all about adventure. I'm here with Lutzi from Extreme Adventure Tours, and we're going to So you can do this, at least in California, on the beach with your off-highway vehicles and your, your RVs. Right, and camp. I mean, I want to come down here and like camp and like do the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, That's exactly. so cool. How many people are going to be out here? Uh, this weekend, we should between uh, 20 to 30,000 people will be out here this weekend. Oh my gosh, like driving up and down, going to the dunes. Driving up and down, and we get about 2 million visitors a year to the park. So. 2 million visitors, really? Yep, that is. And so they're camping here, or they're staying in town, or wherever, but you need to spend the night, right? Yeah, you do. It's always a good idea to spend a few days to really enjoy the Central Coast. Yeah, totally. They're so, because this is just, this is just the beginning, right? <laughs> This structure is absolutely teeming with history. 2015 marks the 175 year anniversary of the completion of this structure. Built by Captain William Goodwin Dana, the 13 room adobe may have appeared spacious from the outside, but it was filled to the brim on the inside. Captain Dana and his wife, Maria Josefa Dana, had 26 children, of which only 13 survived. 10 of those surviving children were boys. You can just imagine the shenanigans and mischief that must have been playing out daily. Think of those children running around and exploring the hundreds of acres depicted in these paintings. And after a full day in the great outdoors, the family would retire inside to finally get some sleep. Mom and dad in one room, the girls next door, and 10 rambunctious boys in the attic. Whew, I'm exhausted just thinking of it. Since 1999, the Dana Adobe Napomo Amigos have worked to restore the adobe to its former grandeur and gain California landmark status. It is because of their tireless efforts that we can enjoy this living piece of history. Let's get a bird's eye view of this magnificent landscape. Whether planning an event or simply exploring the history of this region, this adobe is a treasure well worth the visit. I am up here on the cupola at one point in time. This was the lookout because the Dana Adobe was the only thing between San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara. This is where they could see all of the action before it happened. Today, thanks to the efforts of the restoration team, you can come and get married here and have your picture taken and experience this beauty. Look at this breathtaking public golf course at Monarch Dunes Golf Club. There are actually two award-winning golf courses here. The first, an 18-hole championship old course, as well as the acclaimed 12-hole par three challenge course. Locals and visitors alike will have a great time on these beautiful and challenging courses designed by architect Damien Pascuzzo and PGA Tour Pro, Steve Pate. Woo! 
what a day here at Monarch Dunes Golf Course in Pomo, California. And I'm with Jason Porter. He is the golf pro here. What are we gonna do? So today we're gonna work on some putting. Putting is the most important part of the game. It can really save your round or it can really hurt your round. So we're gonna take a look at your putting stroke and uh, see if we can make some improvements. Okay, well, I definitely need a lot of improvement. So <laughs> let's get to it. So we're gonna be very gentle with this one here. Okay. So go ahead and address the ball set up to it. Okay. Like that? Yeah, just like that. We're okay. gonna aim the putter just to the right side of the hole. We're gonna let the natural slope feed the ball in. Okay, all right. All right, keep your hands steady. All and right. uh, go ahead and hit one for me. <laughs> all right. <Awesome>. Little firm. <laughs> No problem. Just a little he firm. says no problem. <laughs> okay. Probably just want to take the putter back to about here. Okay. And then just make sure you follow through nice and slow. All right. Slow. <gasps> Perfect. Oh! All right. Yeah. We're getting there. A little bit more to the right. Same as okay. you did last time. Okay. Slow. Nice and slow. Ow! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All well, right. thank you so much Absolutely. for having us here. I don't know if I'll ever be a golf pro, but if you're into Pomo, come check this out. Public golf course, just not to be beaten. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm standing here in this incredible structure in Napomo, California. This is Adelina's Bistro. It's in the Monarch Club. And this is Chef Charles. And Chef, tell us, we have some exciting things happening here. We have a little bit of everything on the menu because we're catering to a wide audience. So we've got the comfort food, we've got really nice fine dining, we've got great pizzas, um, wonderful salads, some appetizers, a little bit of everything for everybody. And um, we change it up every week. Not the entire menu, right. but we'll, we'll change a couple items and we just kind of slowly evolve every week. We'll take and change up an appetizer or two and an entree or two. Right, so it is, it is. it's really based on Central Coast cuisine. Right, right, we're right on the coast. We've got great seafood. We're surrounded by growers for for so many different vegetables and fruits and things like that so it's really a cornucopia of, of products to work with after being here for three and a half years I've made some pretty good connections with some local farmers and and really getting an unforgettable experience here. it is and I mean you can look around and see that there is nothing ordinary about this everything from the menu to the structure to you are unique and individual thank you it's, it's a, a beautiful building beautiful space it's very spacious you're not crowded in anywhere it's not a noisy dining room so it's very peaceful tranquil it's you got a great view and, right. and um, like I said, the menu is very fresh and, and changing yeah. and, and always kind of on top of what's available. So Right. So when you come to Napomo, you really need to come and check this place out. It's a very special, special menu and atmosphere. And thank you, Chef, well, for welcome. having us. Yeah. It's our pleasure. Enjoy your stay. Yeah, we will. This is the life. <laughs> I don't even believe it. Here we are at the Sandalwood Spa in Napomo, California. I'm with the director, Heidi Mangiardi. And what do I get to do today? You are in for a treat. We have quite a little hidden jewel here in Napomo. This is a private resort. However, our spa and our restaurant are actually open to the public. So it's a great destination to come. Let's say your other half is off golfing for the day. You don't golf? Let us take care of you here at the spa. <laughs> Where it's a full service spa, we have a nail technician who'll be doing a manicure and pedicure for you. You can enjoy any kind of treatment with a massage. We can get a hot stone, you can do a therapeutic, you can do a more sports recovery, or just a relaxation. We also have an esthetician on site where you will be able to get any kind of facial that you'd like here for the day. So we'll treat you for the day, and after that, we'll take you out to our private jacuzzi where we'll serve you some champagne, and you can spend the rest of the day they're relaxing as well. Well, I mean, I don't know how I could say no to that, so <laughs> can we go do okay, it? Let's get you back there. Okay, let's go. Come on. Golf, spa treatments, restaurant, and then you end up right here at Sandalwood Spa, Champagne. Perfect end to a perfect day in Napomo. Here's to you. Oh my gosh, so amazing. Just back from Oso Flaco Lake here in Oceano State Dunes. There's so much to do here. You can ride your bike on the boardwalk, hop in a kayak, paddle around, have a picnic with your family. Believe me, whatever you choose to do, it's gonna be full of memories. Let's go do some more.
One of the founding fathers of stewardship travel was the late Mr. Huell Hauser. On his show, California Gold, Huell took us on magical road trips around the state, teaching us the history and importance of conservation and preservation. He came into our living rooms like a folksy old friend. How many times did I think to myself, gosh, look at the wonder of it all. Stewardship travel isn't a working vacation. It's taking an hour or two to make a difference to this beautiful land. Adding stewardship to your travels gives a deeper meaning to your vacation and a rewarding experience that you will forever cherish. Explore the 10 destinations along the California Highway 1 Discovery Route and tell us what stewardship travel adventures you find. Together, we can make a difference. One activity, one destination, one discovery at a time. To borrow that favorite phrase from Mr. Huell Hauser, that's amazing.